Are you looking for comprehensive solutions for your performance and automotive needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup and alignment. Located in Hamden, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straight line, S-T-R number eight, L-I-N-E, performance, ampersand automotive, or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Welcome racers and fans to your weekly dose of all things Sportsman Drag Racing. This is Racers News Network Live, presented to you by Straight Line Performance and Automotive. Your hosts, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of Sportsman Drag Racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no time events. They are live every Monday night, right here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. All right. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Racers News Network Live. Myself, Chris, directly across from me, my fellow bald man, Pete Sanka, and I don't know how it is on your screen, Pete, but directly below me is, a, is an old friend of mine that uh, was so kind to take some time out to come on and shoot the breeze about drag racing stuff. And she's been around it for a, a couple of years and has a tiny little bit of experience. Um, but obviously <laughs> talking about my former co-host, Kelly Barbado. Hi, guys. Great to hey, be Kelly, back. It's been a while. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm good. Yeah. Go ahead, Pete. Like riding a bike. Absolutely. This is my usual Monday night. It was uh, right. it was sitting at the, you know, while well, I was on the sofa, I was in the office, and Kat was usually right next to me. And <laughs> was it was Don, it Monday nights with the other show too? It was Monday oh. nights at seven. Yeah. Well, yeah, there were some nights that I was calling in when I was uh, driving home from work because I have a late night at work, but. Usually it was a uh, it was a Monday Saturday or yeah it was Monday night and back then I was very lucky to be part of the results in some cases and I got to interview a lot of my friends because they were doing really well back then so it was it was good times. <laughs> well, you're in luck because if you could spice up the results a little bit, you're more than welcome to come on. <laughs> That seems to be the bane of our existence here. <laughs> you know, I got used to, it was weird because like on fr Monday nights, like when it went away, it was like, what am I going to do? And then like, we would like go out to dinner and have date night. And then, and then I thought about it later and it's like, during the racing season, I don't know how I did it because now without it, it's like, it's, it's like you get back from the track, like Sunday night, and then you have like maybe like monday tuesday wednesday maybe thursday and then you're going back to the track again especially this past year with division one we had a lot of back-to-back -back, so i was like i needed that extra night just to like either whether it was decompress or do something or right. you know have to like take care of stuff yeah well i don't know about you but the day after a long weekend of racing especially if it's hot out mm -hmm. i am complete junk on monday yeah i call that I drag lag yeah, no, I've I've been blessed lately with COVID. I um I have had to go back to the office a little bit, but I've never had to go back to the office on a Monday. So it's nice to kind of roll out of bed and just start right. working. But I did still find myself. We didn't necessarily have date night anymore. It was I was asleep on the sofa at like seven thirty at night. Recovery <laughs> just, night. <laughs> oh, it was. It was totally like it became recovery night. It went from date night to recovery. And I was like, I I can't do this. So I'm like, I'm so tired. And yeah, it was usually like those real hot weekends. They're tough. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I got motor it. Motorhome or no motorhome. <laughs> right. Well, I don't I don't know about you, but I'm not when it's really hot out. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of going in the motorhome and cooling off like before you run. Because then when you come out, it's like nuclear. 
or at least if you kind of stay out there, you kind of adapt to it a little better. I just, I hate going from the crazy cold to the crazy hot. It just kills me. Yeah. It, it, for me, I still like to go in there. I just need the break. And, but yes, I've heard that from other people, like, because right. I think there's different people. There are the people that like, you know, that they want to stay outside. Yeah. But then like, I know like Don, like he keeps the trailer at like 65 degrees and wow. it is shivering in there. But it's funny, the, the year that he did that, he won the championship in dot 90. So I'm like, gonna, obviously this works for you. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go out and buy an air conditioner for my trailer now. Thanks, Don. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it was it was great. But, you know, that, to me, to me, that's how we do it. But like, yes, I've also heard of the people that say like, you know, you want to get used to right. the heat. But, you know, I mean, either way, pro tip, just keep drinking water. Like, yeah. You that's, can't drink enough water. And you, that's you know. true. The, the yeah. more, like I've told a bunch of people how I drag on Mondays. And everyone that I say that to says you've got to drink more water during the weekend. So Agree. I'll have to give that a whirl this year. Liquid IV is like yeah. awesome. I take one every morning at the track. It's usually because I was dehydrated just from racing the next day before. Sometimes yeah. it was because I was dehydrated from something else <laughs> yeah, yeah. no no not you no no <laughs> is it true that alcohol absorbs moisture <laughs> i almost brought one of my uh martinis with me right now but i'm out of weight watchers point so i'll have to save it yeah. for tomorrow <laughs> he wouldn't know about the late late night stuff because he's usually sacked out by like 8 30 9 o'clock that is true. That's because I stay out in the heat all day. It gets me tired. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a, that's an early night. That's a very rare night for me. I've been known to, especially the races when we're done and they say, you know, we're not going to race tomorrow. It's going to rain or whatever. Right. I have been known to have an all nighter with Bill Harder for, for to like, not all like 3 a.m. Like the last two in the place, 3 a.m. Get a couple hours of sleep, drive home. Good God. God bless you. <laughs> You're obviously much younger than I am. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw 3 a.m. Good Lord. Vegas. Well, that's what he Vegas. usually wakes up, yes. though. Yeah. I will say when I go to Vegas, I have no trouble staying awake. Oh, yeah. I Absolutely. do like Vegas. Yeah, but I have done the 3 a.m. wake up call too, so I get you. You know, yeah, sometimes it's like God, I go, to, I wake up sometimes at this time. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> what do you got for it, Chris? So, Kelly, yeah. you have a long history of not only yourself being a competitor, but your dad's got a pretty cool history in the sport as well. Yes. So, my dad's been racing since the early 70s. Um, but, um, he we live in pennsylvania where malvern pennsylvania is known for the home of bill grumpy jenkins so my dad's always known him um from working at different engine shops and whatever um and in about 1998 um he actually got a call from stevie johns and they asked him to come to the shop and my dad interviewed and it was during the first stock truck time so he got to work um, for Bill Jenkins. And when Stevie left, he became the shop foreman. So he was Grump's last shop foreman. And he was there until, you know, he unfortunately passed away about almost 10 years ago now. Um, wow. So it's coming up there on the 10 year, but, um, but yeah, no, that's, uh, I, I've, I, I kind of, you know, we, we have that, you know, together, you know, we have that, uh, you know, I, I don't like to say legacy. I feel like that's like, I, I'm not that special. I'm really nice. I don't even think that in my head. But like, you know, have you know, being part of his legacy, right? Just a small part. I mean, my car, my motor. I always have my valve covers say have a Jenkins arrow. My car has, still has a Jenkins arrow, and you know, people are like, "Oh, is that a real motor?" I'm like, "Well, that motor isn't because I've gotten a new motor since then." But the previous stuff has always, you know, Bill would always look at it, or it's. You know, and actually now the dyno that it used, that Grum's old dyno is now at Chris Wilson's shop, which we use, um, you know, for dyno time and everything. So, 
you know, it's still the, the legacy of Grump is still there and it's still, I I'm feel, I still feel part of it. Awesome. Now, what was the first car your dad had? Because I know that Camaro is not, that he has, isn't all that old. Yeah, no. So his first car was actually um, a 68 Camaro, ironically. That's what I have, too. Um, he bought it um, from, there was a couple owners in there, one of them being Dave Thomas, who runs, um, he had a Corvette, and now he has a Ram Charger um, factory car. Um, and it was his and then so my dad drove that just in like um like I guess it would be considered like heavy back then or something like that um that era, era. um actually rewind that for a minute he had a 73 Camaro just a street car and he was driving that he was racing that and then that was that it was like two like a couple times and then he realized he's like I gotta get a race car so he bought the race car he sold it to buy a trailer for the race car got the 68 drove he drove that for a while and then it became now that like vegas like back in the late 70s vegas were all the rage that was the car to have so um i actually learned this story a couple of weeks ago um a friend of mine came over to the house and my dad was telling him the story and he said um my dad thought he was housing this vega for somebody but in actuality my mom bought it for him and surprised him on christmas it was his car Wow. So him and my uncle redid it and like the early eighties, it debuted. It actually still runs at Maple Grove. Um, like my dad says it's a different color now, but he's like the inside, he looks at it and he goes, this looks exactly how I left it. So that was the first car I ever sat in. And it was funny. He was in the staging lanes when I was at Cecil one day and it's just, I looked over at it and somebody looked at me and I go, that was the first race car I ever sat in. So it was kind of full circle there. Then um, he decided to get rid of that in the uh, late 80s. He built a Grand Prix that is now is still contested now by Jim Laro, who, he, who does spectacular with it. And it is for sale if anybody is uh, interested. It's a, it's a beautiful car. We, if we weren't building this new car, we would probably think about buying it back. It, it was My dad said it was like it was an awesome car. Then eight years later, um, he decided, my mom and him decided they want to build a new car. The newer front end of the Camaro was coming out. So that's the one he we picked and that's what he's had since he's well you know loves it I, i'm sure it's probably gonna be one of the last cars i don't see him buying another one i don't see him going to a roadster this is the i think this is the car he's sort of gonna he's gonna hang on to for a while Very cool. nice. now your history you're you started out in juniors yes just like a ginormous amount of people yes yeah so um in 93, actually, we saw them in 92 at English Town because we were there with my dad's Grand Prix and we saw these cars and my, my mom was like driving us around. And we looked, at, we're like, what are these? And we realized there were like kids in them. And we're like, oh my God, this is like a race car for us. So um, a couple of months later, um, they contacted a friend of theirs who wanted to build one. He was an engineer. Um, he just wanted to build one. So my parents came to us and were like, would you like a junior dragster? Like, and back then, kids split them they didn't have one you know they didn't each have one at that point you know that wasn't the thing so my parents are like how about we share one and you guys you know go with it and we're like yeah cool we'll, we'll do it so we got that one it was a one-off I drove it I got two big for it because back then you didn't have Ford seats either so I got too big for it I got a half scale my brother drove it for a little bit longer he outgrew it and then he bought a KCS and that's kind of where his, and that's where his racing career kind of stopped. I got rid of my junior. I went to a street car as an IROC. And I actually raced a little bit of my 94 Camaro that I'm turning into a super street car right now. And then I finally got to the point, I was like, I, I was looking at what class I wanted to do. I thought I was going to do stock, going to do super, you know, and then I was looking at super street and I go, this is like, I could probably buy, build a cheaper motor than a stocker motor. I, you know, it's, it's pro tree. I can't hit a bottom bowl to save my butt. So I'm going to just bail on that. So, you know, I, I went home, I told my dad, I was like, listen, I think the super street thing's the way to go. I'm like, yeah, it's 1090. It's a big jump from a 14 second street car to a, you know, we thought it was only going to be like a mid 10 second car, but it like, second pass out my dad went like 940 in it and we we're like okay this is a little faster 
I think my dad, my mom almost killed him because she's like, what the heck did you build her? And um, we know we, we eased into it. We had like a top end stop for a while. And I just needed to like kind of ease into it and figure out, you know, I was comfortable because it's funny now. Like I think about how fast I go now. And I remember like my first pass over a hundred, I actually got out of the car and kind of cried a little bit. I was, I was like, okay, that was a little scary. That was, that was a big jump. Like I didn't mean that to happen. So, you know. How you doing that by 200 feet? Yeah. (laughs) Like he was telling me, he's like, I let, he left it on the stop and then it took off. And I was like, I was so afraid of it coming off the stop because I didn't know if it was going to get loose or whatever. Because I'm, you know, now I get it, but you know, you know, almost 20 years ago, I was, I was like, no, oh my god, this is a bad idea. And you know, I just remember getting out, like hugging, like somebody. I was just, like, of my friend. I was just like, oh my god, I'm, I'm terrified of this thing, and I'm, I'm like, this isn't good. So we took a step back, and then I just kind of eased back into it. So you know, it's. But that's that's the car. That's that's like the one. I I, I don't think I could ever get rid of that car. I I love that car. I would get something else as as supplemental, but I could never get rid of this car. I, I love it. And that it's a '68, and I have a, a picture in my parents' garage of my '68 and my dad's '68 in the same lane at Maple Grove, like 30 years difference. And it, it's such a cool thing to see. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Awesome. So you're you're quite literally going to be buried in that car, possibly. Yeah. No, possibly. I possibly. Hopefully not. Hopefully nothing. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I didn't mean that way. I don't want to be buried do it because of that car. I just want to be buried in that car. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. That's it's awesome. I I do love that car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's a beautiful car. It's very well turned out. You know, lots, yeah, Larry the, King, the detail in it is unbelievable yeah. if anybody's never seen it. Larry King is, he, he built my dad's last two cars and he did this one. He did a lot of work on it. I used to have just the painted grill. Um, one year I just thought, hey, you know what? Let's spend all the money I've made. Let's just buy a full grill, real grill. I walk into Kingy's and I'm like, here, you need to make all this fit. And he's just like, fine like he's like really you're killing me right now so you know it, it and even that looks beautiful and my dad wired it with the with the lights and it's got pink halos as you could see from the picture you know that's on your website right now you know it's got that and he he even the, the wiring is like perfect and he made it so it unplugs so I could you know take the car you know take the front end off no issue and all that stuff but that I, once that happened and I got some really killer like magnum wheels for it that just set the car off like i basically i literally when don got rid of his vega i stole the wheels off of his car <laughs> i said you can't sell the car with those wheels because i want those wheels and he's like fine <laughs> so whatever right exactly i know he's like he knows not to like fight with me he's just like and he knew he knew it's funny this is one of those you know soulmate moments like you know that you're probably meant to be together we were at a race and we we're at the weld booth years ago and we both not realizing each other love magnum wheels like all the different wheels alumna star 2.0s all the different wheels he both, we both said oh, i really like those magnums so when he redid his car he got magnums and i really couldn't didn't really get any and then when he, like a couple years later when he sold the car i was like well i want that <laughs> he's like yeah sure take them <laughs> that'd be so uh, what are you, I heard some rumblings about you building another car. What are you building? So um, I have this car, it's a 94 Camaro. It was actually my dad's 40th birthday gift that my mom gave him. So any, yeah, if you're, if you're all counting at home, that's two cars my mom surprised him with. Wow. So yeah, she's the best. <laughs> Call her the CEO. Well. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, it was a 90, it was a 94, it was his 40th birthday, which is scary. I'm going to turn 40 this year. and you know, it's probably going to be debuting this year, but, um, it's 94. And then about four years later, I was turning 16 and my parents were like, well, we really don't, because I wanted like a third gen Camaro and they were very worried about safety. And they're like, we want something with an airbag. We want something with ABS, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I get you. And they were like, okay, how about you buy the car from us? Like stupid cheap, like work a summer and just it's yours. So I got it and everything. It was my baby 
I drove it in high school. I went to an all-girl Catholic school, which cracked me up. You know, it's funny because nobody's driving a Camaro, like a V8 Camaro at that. Right. So I roll in, you know, and then I go to school in Villanova and same thing. I'm in the auto club. I'm driving this Camaro. Couple years in, I guess I'm a junior. I buy my race car. I still drive my Camaro around, but, you know, I always did everything for the red car, but then I got the race car and all the money had to go to that. And that car just kind of sits there. The red car sits and it's sitting at my house and people, you know, my, like Don's partner's borrowing it and his parents are, need to borrow it. He needs, you know, it's always like a backup car for somebody. And it kind of became like, it's just sitting there. My dad's like, why don't we make it a race car? I mean, SNW has like so many parts that you can just literally bolt on. Like it's super easy. Like we could do this, you know, believe me, if we were millionaires, we would have handed it to Kingy and been like, here, just do what you need to do with this. But this was a project. We didn't want to get rid of our cars. We wanted the third car. So that's been about five, five years in the making. It's been through so many, it started as an 1150 car. It was going to be, we're going to build a small block for it. It's going to run 1150s. Now it has a full roll cage um, or a full cage. Like it's got like, you know, like, yeah, it's a cage, not a bar. It's so it's, it's good to 850. Um, it has a big block. It <laughs> like it. And so we're like, okay, it'll go. Now we can run 10 O's. Like we're almost walking toward 850, but we're like, okay, we're not going to do that. But so it's, so for right now, like there's actually the index rules actually make you have extra things like mufflers and some other um, stuff. And that's fine. But, you know, we looked under it. We're like, you know what? Let's just get it out this year. Um, you know, the, the, you can't have, you know, the, they, you can't have a throttle stop on an index car. Right. We don't have the provisions for like the plates. So my, my dad has to probably create something. So it's becoming right now, it's just going to be a super street car. And I say just, but it's going to be a super street car for right now because yeah. it's less rules that we need. And I think it's a good place to shake it down because we also think about, okay, we're going to build a car for a class that we don't run with. We're usually at the track like every weekend and the weekends that we aren't, we're catching up and we're like making sure our loved ones realize that we're still around because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're trying to like, catch up on things. So that's why we thought, you know, it would be a good super street car when I feel comfortable. I could maybe try to like hustle and maybe try to run like my car in super gas and that car in super street in Rob series. That's going to be a, a big undertaking because there's not a lot of time between runs. Right. But it's definitely divisionals. Like I feel like my dad had no problem running that in the divisional, like in Super Street, and running the other car in Super Gas. So, you know, we're just gonna play it by ear. Could be a Super Pro car too. If my brother ever decides he wants to like come to the track, you know, Island's actually 50 minutes from my house. If when I feel comfortable taking it myself, I could put on the open trailer, run it up to Island, you know, go play around for a day. So it's sort of just gonna be like for everything utility car exactly and god forbid if something is not you know something breaks somebody's trying to you know point wise and you're trying to battle you put somebody in it and you you know you play you know you kind of you can play blocker right 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 very cool excellent now you have any uh any plans for the silver car this year cleaning it <laughs> yeah. i got luck i was very blessed this year um you know, my dad checked the motor out and everything. We were good. We have, you know, we got some runs on it, but not enough for a freshen up. And I mean, he's, I get a free freshen up. So if he's saying I don't need a freshen up, I don't need a freshen up. So, <laughs> you know, he's, he's the best, but, um, you know, so really it's a set of tires and, um, you know, check the brakes over, you know, I, I shouldn't need, you know, maybe some rear brakes maybe. And, uh, Right. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have like a killer season last year that I put a ton of runs, but you know, it, it allowed us to have more time to spend on the red car, so that I got lucky that way. Very cool. Now, the the silver car, the sixty eight, you mm -hmm. you run, you have run in the past, and I assume you're still going to in the future too. Run Super Street and Super Gas, kind of like what what Pete does as well on occasion. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, the car can it's totally capable in super gas it's actually you know it, it's gone rounds in super gas at the keystones like it went like down to i think it was like fourth round i mean 
I mean, that's not saying much for other people, but like I, for me, uh, you know, super gas fourth round at a, at the Keystones a couple of years ago, that was, that yeah, was a big deal for me. Really yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, and the funny thing is that I don't know, and and maybe with this car, maybe it, this will become more of a super street car and maybe my car, I tend to only, I don't run super gas much but I do tend to find a 90 pretty quickly. Like I run it like once a year, yep. but it, it like, I, I turn a couple knobs and I, you know, I keep, make sure I keep the notes from the previous time. And I'm just like, all right, let me try this. And I think like last year at the Keystones, like I made like five, six runs or something. And like three of them were nineties. I'm like, right. I'm like, I sit there and try to dial my dad's car all year trying to find nineties. <laughs> and I, it's like another weekend like and i, I i'm like why am i struggling with your car <laughs> yeah I, i've <laughs> always like, said my car because i've always had good luck whenever i race super gas mm -hmm. uh, and i've always said that my car would make a better super gas car than super street yeah for, for some reason i just i won't pull the trigger on it because yeah i hate being chased but, so much i guess i don't know <laughs> no i'm with you and i mean the other part of it is is like I do, I, I may do it for maybe like the dot 90 association because yeah. of the time. Like I just said, like, it's a lot of turnaround, like quick turnarounds with my dad. I like being, I like, you know, with, being with my dad, I like to watch his runs right. and he likes to watch my runs. So it's nice to be in two different classes. And even like, you know, a couple of years ago, Don was running super street in Bill Phillips's car. And it was tough because it's like, I want to be there watching him. And when he was running super gas, it was cool. I could watch my dad and I can watch Don. I can be there for both of them in super gas. And super, when we were both running super street, it was like, I can't help you and you can't help me. Right. And right. I'm like, I, I, I like when we're kind of spread out and I can, you know, I, I like to help everybody. I want to, you know, I want to be able to video, like, like there's circuit races that I don't see my dad run all weekend. Like, and you know, we're, we, I video every run. So I made sure that every run is video. We look, whether we look at over there or like the next day or whatever, I like all of his runs video. So when I don't get to do that, it's like, kind of like, I hope I didn't miss out on something. It's almost like I have to depend on him. You know, are you hitting the tree? It, was right. that a spin? What, right, you know, right, right. I, I can't, yeah, you know, yeah. so <laughs> luckily bet. he has a race pack now. So I can be like, okay, yeah, we can see <laughs> that's what happens. a tattletale. <laughs> <laughs> so, from from Rob Keister, you you won a mid mid blah, blah, Let me try that again. Take two. You won a Mazda race mm -hmm. in the silver car. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I did. I I won. Um, my first race I won in that car was in Super Gas. Yeah. So, up until a couple of years ago, I was the only one who's won both in a Super Gas car and, and the Super Street car. So, um, I know. Uh, I think Ronnie Orban may have been the other one that has joined me in that since maybe four years, five years ago. And then I, um, and I think Bill Phillips won one too in super comp. Yeah. So he's got, so I, I'm joined by two, by two other people now, but yeah, at one point I was like the only one that won the same one, two different classes in that, but yeah, no, that was a, that was a great day. I had uh, George Smith in the final and it was, uh, it was definitely a special day. Now, my personal favorite trophy that gets handed out <laughs> in Mid Atlantic Dot Ninety, you also got one of those. Yes, um, I almost went and grabbed it in the because I think, it, but it's not here. I have it at my it's at my parents' house. It's in the garage. But yeah, my pig trophy. Um, it's funny. I have a pig trophy and I have the North South trophy, and um, I, I think I think between Don and I, we both have we have a collection of like every Dot Ninety thing that they've ever had like I we have like the yeah we have the Christmas tree up there and I have like a plaque somewhere from the circuit race Don's got a championship trophy um championship plaque I have a dot 90 plaque a couple dot 90 plaques and yeah the north south one but yeah the pig and I yeah I was one of the first ones to get the pig and that was that was a crazy day Chris was there and I Okay, I'll fully admit I was so hammered in that winter circle because they I was the last person to be I was waiting in line. I was drinking, putting shots with as many people. I, I had 
I had coworkers there. One spilled a beer on my car and he was so like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, keep it on there. Like spill the beer all over my car, deserve it. <laughs> and I think that was the beginning of the Dave Long champagne toast too. So it was, uh, that was definitely, and then going back the next day and going to the finals against Marty Ganjoin, that was just, it was a crazy week. That was a crazy year that, I mean, that, that went from, I spent one weekend building a motor with my dad because my motor blew up like after English town. Um, we built the motor in like, like a weekend or so, or two weekends. And then I tested it one weekend and then went to the Pigris the next week. So, I mean, it was, it was a whirlwind. I was like, I was beside myself and it was like 150 degrees. <laughs> That, like, that was the weekend from hell, heat-wise, oh when, when, when we were all there. I got out of the car, and they're calling the top. I, I got out of the car after I won. I, they're calling the top eight race first round. And it's basically like a free race that I, I made it in for qualifying. And I looked at my dad, and I said, I don't want to go. <laughs> I'm so hot. I'm like, oh. And then I lost first round. And I, and, and I believe me, I didn't throw it. I just. I don't, I forget what even happened, but I, I, I lost and I was like, all right, I'm good. And then they were like, okay, well, we're going to do all the pictures after the race. Well, so I remember just sitting in the, in the, in the trailer under the air conditioner, just like sprawled out, like, I'm like, oh my God. And then they were like, okay, come on up. And of course, I don't know how it happened. I was like the last in line, but that was just a rolling party for a half an hour, hour. That, that, that was the weekend that I met your mother. <laughs> Funny story about no, I don't that. Know was she... two week, that was the next year. He, she wasn't at the pig roast. That pig roast. She wasn't at the oh, one okay. I won. Yeah. I was, again, hotter than the third level of hell. Yeah. I walked over to their RV, opened up the door, just sat down on the stairs <laughs> and closed the door to try and cool off. <laughs> and I felt a presence behind me. And I turned around <laughs> and I looked and there's Kelly's mother staring at me like, who the hell are you and why are you in my RV? I'm like, hi, I'm Chris. Oh, okay. She went back to doing whatever it was she was doing. I was just yeah, like, she... literally like this. So you weren't too close to the fireplace, right? No, no. I yeah. was sitting in the stairwell going up into the, yeah. into the RV. Cool no, off. I remember that one. That was like the next year. But you know what the thing is, is they were all hot. So it's it's tough to delineate. They're all because they're always in the middle of the season. And, and you know, yeah, I it's I'm just glad that it's usually like when we don't leave our rig, I can take two showers a day and have plenty of water. <laughs> so when I know we, I'm like, OK, I know that I can I can race all day and I can shower twice. Like I can shower in the morning and shower at night. Because, yeah, it's awful. So schedule-wise, I know you tend to stick to, you know, the mid-Atlantic area. Any any mm -hmm. thoughts of branching out a little bit more? Um, I mean, we're very lucky this year. We both actually got seven grade points. So that should help us get into where we want to get into. Um, we talked about Norwalk. Um, you know, we'd love to do that. Um, it's on top of a dot ninety race. So it's tough to want to, like, drive six hours to Norwalk or go to Maple Grove for in 45 minutes. So it'll probably depend like, you know, how we're doing at the time, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll go to Virginia. Um, definitely. We love Virginia is such a beautiful track. It's so nice. Um, you know, we, we, you know, they haven't had the national there in a couple of years. So I'm, we're excited to go back to the national. They have pro mods there and never get to see pro mods. I haven't seen pro mods since the last time I was at that race. Um, you know, that, but I mean, basically, I mean, we talk about Epping, but then, you know, my dad's like, well, we'll take it to Epping because it's a super shitty national event. I'm like, I do find it super gas at a national event. Why are you making me go to Epping? <laughs> so yeah, it's um, not like there's national points that you're chasing at Super Street. So exactly, exactly. And happens. yeah, I mean, and so, I mean, the big thing is um, my dad finished seventh and he's doing pretty good in Jags All Star points. So we're going to go to the first couple races and see how he does. If he seems like we have a shot, we'll go to Lebanon Valley. We'll go to, you know, some of the other, wherever, like the last event is. I think it's Lebanon Valley. I don't, I don't think new media counts this year, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll travel a little bit to make sure like we do what we can for him. Cause we kind of last minute when he won Cecil, 
we weren't really paying attention and we realized we we're like if we would have gone to Rockingham and did decent we probably could have given Mike a run for his money in the end but you know it was one of them we looked back and we're like why didn't we just go to Rockingham and I'm like well and I'm like I don't know that track and it's like that would have been tough to like go down there and just try and you know but you know but we could have at least tried but I think we had come off of like eight or nine races in a row we were just so tired and we we're just like we just want to like go home. <laughs> like you know but you know we'll we'll be a little bit more aware you know next year <laughs> and make sure it's like okay we need to make sure we're watching points and like if one of us needs to go somewhere we just need to suck it up and go yeah so if your dad makes it higher in the judge points you're gonna leave your car home and just take his um go I mean, we would because with the stacker i mean you're bringing two cars anyway right, um right. probably won't bring the third one and even the third one like i even thought about like you know i may take like <clears throat> take the bullet and like you know maybe do some shake and shaking it down maybe park the silver car for a little bit just to focus on the red car but i'm still trying to figure that out i mean if he is doing really good in jags points i may even run super gas to block for him like i would i would do that for him like he's we talked about him doing that in super street for me, you know, a couple of times when I've been up for the championship, but it's, it would be more difficult for him to run super straight. I think it's, that's a lot of numbers in the throttle stuff. And it's like, then I'm trying to dial him on it and I'm trying to like win a championship. So I'm like, maybe that's, maybe I'll just take, you know, he's like, you know, you'll be fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let fate play out and see what happens. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um got anything pete always <laughs> talk to always. us board. talk so, to us I know, I'm, what sure, board? <laughs> I'm sure you've had uh you've been able to access the division one schedule yes uh, it's pretty busy and on top of that i know you're a frequent flyer for rob's races yeah so you're going to be pretty busy this year. Uh, yeah. You have a plan of attack. Uh, you know, you're just going to kind of start hitting them all and see where you fall. What What's your schedule like this year? Yeah. I mean, we're, if there's a race, you know, and then in, within, you know, two hours, we're going basically. I mean, that's just how we usually go. And I don't even know what that's like to have a race within two hours. I know we're, listen, <laughs> our long race is Virginia and we'll do it because it is so gorgeous. Right. It's such an awesome track. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I just, I love that place. So like, and the ride's not terrible. And I will say, um, having a rig that you enjoy driving, like right. my dad enjoys driving his, it's weird. It's, it's like, he does enjoy it. He's, not like because i'll even offer like oh you know you should teach me how to drive i don't think he wants i think he likes to drive he wants to drive yeah right yeah he wants to drive he's fine with me just hanging being co-pilot or whatever so you know i and and i'm cool with that too because i i don't want to drive that thing's ginormous i i want nothing to do with driving it i just try to offer to be nice but <laughs> but yeah it's, you know but that's the thing you know when you know, we don't have to go, we don't, you know, for Rob's races, we can work a full week and, right. you know, we're gone on the weekends, but, you know, it's Maple Grove, 45 minutes, um, Cecil's like an hour and 15. So is Atco, you know, so we're, we're lucky in this area, you know, we're from my parents' house, because that's where I'm usually leaving from. And even, you know, Don, me and Don's house is a little bit more North, but still we're, you know, pretty much two, two and a half hours from everything. New media's, like an hour well new media actually has the crow flies for everybody is always quicker but you can't right. go that way right, so right. you know and i do feel bad don has to go through like like traffic circles if anybody that drives from allentown to maple grove uh you yeah 222 is awful so yeah <laughs> but you, you know you haven't still... lived driving traffic circles until you've driven through indianapolis that is where they created traffic circles i am convinced of it and Sedona, Arizona. We went through oh. like seven. I think I counted them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, they're, it, they're in traffic circle. Well, it's funny because, you know, tra my, when I go through it, like if, I, if I'm coming from here to Maple Grove, I'm usually in a car. But 
him in a rig he actually like he drives tractor trailers now um for entomans and he's like i found another way to go and i'm like well could you go that way with a rig he goes yeah i could and he's like i don't even care if it co- takes 15 more minutes he goes i hate traffic he goes i hate the traffic circle and i think they made a neck another one so then there's two traffic circles worst idea goes, ever gonna... yeah no, i yeah, I mean, see, Echo got rid of them. Like, Echo, like, because Echo had a couple, you know, on the way there on 73, but they got rid of them. They were smart enough. But, yeah. but yeah, now to answer your question, we're lucky that, you know, we can leave on a Thursday night for a divisional. We can leave on a Friday night for a race, for Rob race. Now, Na- you know, nationals, we do two a year, you know, maybe three this year, you know, so we're leaving, you know, on the Wednesday, Thursday side, and it's very rare. So, you know, and we have a very, you know, when, you know, we have, I have a very understanding mother and Don's not racing right now. And he is super understanding too. So he's just rooting me on. And what's, uh, what are Don's plans? So you got any cars in the fire? Has he got anything going on? I wish. No, no he's, no. Uh, no, he's, he's like, he's finding his way. He's looking for his next step. I think, uh, the Vega took so long to sell. And then all of a sudden this guy was hot on it right before COVID wanted it gone. And then he's kind of looking around, like, did I just make the biggest mistake of my life? And then he's like, eh. and I said, well, just this time, just wait until you find something that you are absolutely in love with. Right. Woosa. Woosa. Yeah. So he's, he's very, he is a much more patient person than me. And, um, but no, he's been, you know, he's, well, the picture above me is that's his big toy. That's his, that's our, our, that's our ice cream car. So we oh, go nice. get ice cream. In it. So, nice. but that's his, that's his baby. He's had that since he was 21. So, uh, you know, he's okay with that and going to car shows and things like that and uh, helping his dad with some, you know, project cars. So, you know, the time comes, I, you can't stay away because he'll come to the track and I'll be like, you want to come back? Yeah, especially when you have a spare car sitting in the trailer too. You know? Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure when that happens, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it, no, it's no. like anything. It's like <laughs> anything else. The quieter us guys get, the more we want it. Yeah. No, and I, I see him, you know, I'll, 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 I, I know him long enough now that I'm like, I know when he's starting to think about something or he's smi- I see him grinning. I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to cost us money. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Awesome. So uh, we always ask this of everyone that comes on the show so that they have an opportunity to give them a shout out. Uh, okay. Who, uh, who helps you out? Who helps out your program besides the obvious? Okay, so I wrote it down on my phone. Because there you go. Good for you. Because I forgot people before. So, all right. Uh, well, obviously, my mom and dad were the first ones to ever get me to, you know, do this and gave me the opportunity. And, you know, it, it was actually last year I won Maple Grove, um, one of Rob's races, and my mom was there. And she hasn't been there for one of my race wins, I think, since, like, my first one in 1993. So. Wow. It was a big deal. Like I was, I was like beside myself and we had family friends there. It was, it was awesome. But my dad, I couldn't do this without him. He builds my motors. He works on my car. Cause you know, my car is at his house and I'm in my house and you know, that sometimes it's like an hour away. And I mean, there was a thing I had in the end of last year and you know, I had to go home and they worked on my car all week cause I was, they were there and they knew I had to, you know, I was at work and back and forth and you know, I came over when I could, but you know, they know I'm, you know, I'm a little bit far away and, but yeah. you know, they were, they're awesome. They were, they're so, they're so great. So, um, Don, obviously he's the like most supportive guy. Like I'll call him and I will just bitch about my run, how I screwed up or how the track was something or how something happened, whatever. And I told him, I'm like, I'm sorry because I know you're not racing right now and that's not fair for me to bitch about that I get to race. And he goes, you're having a bad day. Like, it's okay. Like, tell me what's going on. I'll, I'll listen. So, you know, I'm, I'm really lucky to have him. He's He supports all these crazy dreams and goals and he doesn't look at the credit card statement and that really helps. Yeah. 
<laughs> he's that keeps our relationship together. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's he's great. I and I can't wait for him to come back. He came to a couple races last year, you know, and they were good. And I was like, I, I really miss you here. So we'll fingers crossed we'll he'll find his way back to the racetrack. <laughs> um king's race cars as i said he built my car he did a lot of work on the new car um s and w bought built me uh, or had some bolt-on stuff we bought from them um they, they were great it's it's amazing the things that you can just bolt on um yeah. on a you know when you have the right car the fourth gen right. camaro very yeah. popular car um i know they got like s10 parts and things like that so they're right. they're great um uh, gil davis my, that's who my dad works for right now. So um, that's where my dad's building the motors and everything. And yeah, Gil's, Gil's great. Um, ET Transmissions, he's the best transmission guy in the world. <laughs> um, Select Performance, um, Roy at Hoosier. He, I, can, I literally call that boy like and just be like, what tire did you say that I should have on my red car like five years ago? And then he'll tell me, I'll be like, all right, well, here's what's changed since then. And then yeah. he'll tell me, okay, we'll put this on instead. So no, he's, he's the best. I love Roy. He's great. <laughs> um, Roadrunner Race Fuels, Wilson Race Engines for the Dino Time. Um, Adam at PRS. He's in that circle. Luckily, he does so well in my shocks, but I have to go in that circle to get hit him. But he's worth the circle to, to get to Adam. So um, Nick and Mike Daniels, um, they're a friends of ours that my dad actually, my dad's known Mike for years, like growing up um, in the same neighborhood and everything. Um, and it's funny, my dad, so they, they decided to go racing maybe like 20, 15, 20 years ago, they decided to start driving, um, drive cars. And um, they just bracket raced for most of the time. A couple of years ago, they decided we're gonna try this dot 90 stuff out. And um, Nick, the son bought, um, uh, Oh my God. Um, Bob Henry's Corvette and he had to work. So his dad drove the car. His dad got to the finals with my dad at Maple Grove last year at the, in 2020, the infamous eighth mile race. So they ran each other in the final, which was pretty crazy because they've been friends. They've known each other forever. So, you know, not even just at the racetrack, this is like kids growing up kind of thing. So it was, it was pretty cool. So um, but yeah, no, and they and they, um, uh, they owned a shop. Um, and then, um, they actually, um, Mike just retired. So, um, but Nikki still works at another shop and if I need tires mounted, because again, I live up here, they live down there. My dad just runs them over, you know, anything drive shaft stuff, motor, you know, any, anything quick. He's like, Mike's retired now. So he just like comes over and just like pick stuff up. What do you need? What do you need? And he's always like, you know, we're at the track and he, they drive back and forth and like, what do you need us to bring tomorrow? We'll, we'll bring it. We'll pick it up. You know, what do you need? And, you know, it's good to have friends like that at the track. And, you know, Nick, Nikki had an incident last year, unfortunately, and they're rebuilding the car now. So I'm excited that he's going to come back next year. Cause uh, he's one of my drinking buddies. So I really missed him. And again, I I'm sorry. I left you. I'm, I'm going to make this public. I'm really sorry. I left you in the stands at the Keystones. And I forgot to bring you back. <laughs> Who's right? Just I think it. away <laughs> in my defense. <laughs> and then um, Greg Kelly of Motorsports Innovations. He's another guy I will call and bother about race pack stuff, and he never rolls his eyes. At least I don't feel it. Then that that you know when he calls, you know when I call him. And uh, my favorite sommelier, Dave Long, who always provides me with um, champagne when I win. And. Um, yeah, my and and all my friends, you know, my close friends at the track. Um, Amanda Wojcicki is one of my. She is my bestie. And uh, HHP, which is uh, Huber, Harper, and Phillips. Um, you know, it's still going to be HHP, even though we're missing. Uh, we're going to miss Bill Phillips definitely. But um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna keep the HHP going because uh, I think Bill would want that. And uh, you know, Billifer is one of my best buds go out to dinner sometimes, you know, when we just, one of us is having a hard time or just, you know, just needs a, just needs a night of espresso martinis. He's my boy. I can just count on him. Good stuff. <laughs> Good. Or the, or the karaoke as well. I did miss karaoke nights. We haven't done karaoke in a long time. It was, they seem to go in phases. It used to be wee bowling and then it was karaoke. And then now we just got lazy and just, we do nothing like maybe make like a charcuterie board or something. That's about it. I'll, I'll 2020, 
when, when you start up the bowling thing again, I'll join you, but you will never see me at karaoke. I promise you that. <laughs> never. I'll go there and watch, but you'll never get me on stage. <laughs> they don't they don't make enough alcohol. I promise you that. <laughs> Well, they got oh, the, they got God. these really nice blue lights on the yep. awning too. Not happening. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, we have. Yeah, they have the. Uh, well, all the golf carts have underglow, and yeah, you know, they have all the different color underglows. And then mine, I just got pink because I'm like, let's be honest here, I'm never going to use the color that's not pink. So right. I just have pink underglow on mine. <laughs> I got red on mine to match the car. So oh yeah, very cool. Well, Kelly, I I hope that you may are able to make. Uh, it's worth your while to make a trip up into my area this this summer and hey fingers crossed it means dad's doing good in points <laughs> absolutely yeah well, very cool well i appreciate your time to come on and hang out with us it was real nice to talk to you and see you again and and the dawn and dawn too yeah so. now he uh, I, i'll have to go find him <laughs> <laughs> he made himself scared. I think he was afraid I was going to drag him on like I used to do on my show. <laughs> there we go. So, and, I'm glad, and I heard and I heard my buddy wailing in the background too. So yeah, he's uh, earlier. Uh, uh, um, there he is, right there. Uh, sacked yeah. out. Yeah, I was going to pick him up. But I didn't want to bother him. He's a little ball fur right now. So <laughs> yeah, he's well, the best. Cool. <laughs> hopefully, we'll get a chance to see you this summer. Um, yep, like and you can meet the new. Uh, you can meet our new mascot, Nova. Yes, I saw the picture of him. Yeah, he's nuts. He's a little bit of a terrorist, but, you know, hopefully, you know, blood clots. That's right. <laughs> yeah, some pictures of him helping me out with the new car. He's, like, blood attacked. Clots. When you get on the ground, he attacks you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh... <laughs> well, tell, tell mom and dad I said hi. And, I will. Uh, I appreciate your time. Oh no! Thank you guys. I really appreciate this. Let's we'll do it again. This was fun. All right. was like the whole winter, time. winter interviews in 2022, Cal. Oh God, my winter interviews are a little long. You hopefully you have an editor. Absolutely, we make things happen here. <laughs> Great. You know, how, you know how it works. Yep. <laughs> Great catching up with you, Kelly. Good luck this year. Pete, you too. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye, Kelly. Have a great night. Bye. By Kelly Barbado, Division One Super Street Super Gas Racer and Mid Atlantic yeah, Mid Atlantic Dot Ninety competitor as well. Awesome interview. I knew it was going to be awesome. So, what, what do we got coming up? Uh, let's see. We have coming up next Monday night. Uh, Rolly Miller from NMCA and MRA is going to be joining us. Uh, let me grab my decade at a glance here. Um, one thing that I'm really, you, you, you got to try and hopefully you won't have a class or anything beyond for this one. Uh, on the seventh, Nick Kissack, he's from uh, Louisiana area. He is a uh, dragster racer and he's also a um, hoping to be in the next Summer Olympics shooting uh, skeet. Oh, very cool. So, yeah, he's going to talk a little bit about like training, the mental stuff, you know, everything that he can bring from, uh, you know, being an Olympic quality right. athlete into the sport of drag racing. So that'll be cool. Very cool. Yeah. Tuesday, February 15th. Mark this one on your calendar. This is going to be good. We are being taken over by Taylor Nobile. She is going to be interviewing her aunt Jackie. And Uncle Sean. On Tuesday? On a Tuesday. The only reason is because Monday is the 14th of February. Valentine's Day, right. Valentine's Day. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll that's, definitely have to be here for that one. That's going to be good. She said she's going to try and make sure they're in opposite ends of the house so they don't throw things at each other and hurt each other. So stick me up in the corner of the screen somewhere and I'll just watch. <laughs> regulate. Yep. Um, and then February 21st is going to be Carly Wolf. She races Super Street um, in yeah. Division One. She wrote a really cool article um, on her Instagram yeah. about the next generation. And um, I spoke with her about it. And I said, I know you were just on a couple months ago. I said, but I want you to come back on and talk about that because that's one thing 
throughout last year that we kind of touched on as the year went on, yeah. you know, what is it going to take to keep the younger kids in, in, interested in it and to bring more younger kids into it? Yep. No doubt. So, be really cool. So uh, how's things with you down in uh, street line world? Good, good. Shop's busy. Uh, the day job is busy. I start another class Wednesday night. So, you know, nice. hustle from now until springtime, and then hopefully I can take it easy a little bit. So you want to do my English comp too for me, buddy? Yeah. I'm gonna, I was just looking through all my requirements. I have to take an English class too. And <laughs> not looking forward to it. Welcome to the nightmare. Not looking I'd, forward to it. I'd rather take math than go through history comp two again. I'm, I'm trying very my, I'm starting Wednesday night, my first class of the second half of the credits that I need. So hopefully now it's going downhill. Now you need 30 credits, is that correct? Nice. Yep. Is that something that you th that's going to get knocked out this year, or does it get? Do you have like no. a timeline I mean, you I, have to work I on? Could, but I'm just what I'm trying to do is take one class in the spring, one class in the fall. Um, this way here, I keep the ball rolling. But excuse me, but it's not overwhelming, which is the the plan. So um, they have like a five week crash course that you can take in the middle of the summer. I have zero desire to do that. So I was going to say, you, have, you pretty much don't have the time for it in the summer anyways. Yeah, I mean, listen, if it's for your job, you make time. But if I don't right. need to do it, I'm not going to do it. Right. All right. Let me just find one thing here. March 11th through the 13th, 2022 at the Eastern States Exposition Center. Um, Northeast Motor Northeast Motorsports Expo is going to be going on. I know Lebanon Valley is going to be there. Um, I don't know of any other drag strips that are planning on going. Um, I'm planning on going Saturday with um, Elijah, as long as the weather is not absolutely horrible. Snow, right. cold, I don't care. Snow, eh, not so much. So, again, March 11th through the 13th at the at the Big E. So. And we have a uh, an RV expo coming up this coming weekend in Hartford. At the so Civic Center? The, yep. So for any of the Connecticut locals or right over the line in Massachusetts, if you need to check out a new RV or camping sites or beef jerky, whatever they sell there, uh, that's this coming weekend, which I just found out about today. So. You're going to take your wife with you and make sure she keeps you in line and you don't come home with anything new? I, You know, honestly, last year was my first year with the, the new-to-us RV that we got. And I am so in love with that thing that I just, unless someone offered me something brand new for the same payment, which we all know is not going to happen, uh, I absolutely love what I got. So I'll go there and I'll look around. At, one thing that we did, we went a couple of years ago and, you learn a lot about different camping sites, excuse me, uh, different camping resorts and stuff. So uh, you get brochures and stuff, and and they also have a lot of accessories, too, uh, that you can buy to make whenever you're traveling your life a little easier. Uh, so we enjoy that end of it. So we might, you know, if nothing's going on, uh, no house projects or anything, we might take it right up there and see what happens. Yeah, they they have one um, about an hour south of me. Uh, it's actually in a, it's in a really cool building. It's one of those inflatable sports buildings. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, they have one in there, but the the parking is tough. It's right. it's a huge huge inflatable sports building with a really small parking lot. Yeah. So it doesn't it's not real conducive to you know accessibility. Yeah. No doubt. But I think we are all set. I'm going to take buddy. Kelly Barbado. Eight o'clock. Another one Eight of the o'clock. Straight Thank up. You, Pete, you, go take your, you can go take a shower, watch a soap opera. That's right. 
and you'll be in bed within forty five. Eight o'clock, I go take a shower. About twenty five after eight, I'm in bed. That's just enough to fast forward through the commercials. <laughs> Life is good. We got it all figured out. There we go. All right, people. Thanks for coming on, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks, buddy. You got it, my friend. All right. Take Thank care. you again to Kelly Barbado and uh, Straight Line Performance and Automotive. I'm going to send you a picture in a little bit. I want you to look at it. And when you have time tonight, tomorrow, whatever, just give me some feedback. You got it. Um, we're out of here. Have a great night, everybody. We will be back, like I said, next Monday night with uh, Rolly Miller from NMCA, NMRA. Have a great night. We'll talk to you all Go. soon. See you guys. See you.